Hi guys. So I came across an interesting article on Crosswalk website day before yesterday with the title When churches reopen, don't sing or shake hands and do make someone's short, says this new guide. So this is what the new guide says. Or rather this is what the article says. An ecumenical group of clergy, scientists and other experts has released a guide to help congregations consider best practices for reopening for worship. So among the guides that they recommend is refraining from congregational singing, clap or stomp instead, preachers to shorten their sermons, congregants mouth your response during communion instead of speaking. Pass the peace to other worshippers with a gentle nod or a reverent bow, but no physical contact. So the article continues, as states reopen, how will we resume worship gatherings in person while the pandemic is still with us? The document asks in its introduction. A careful response to that challenge is much more than unlocking the church doors and inviting all to come sit, sing, and greet one another as had been our custom. We know the dangers posed and the risks taken if we were to do that. We care enough not to let that happen. So guys, when I was reading that article, a few things came to mind. And one of the things that came to mind was the religiosity of it all. You know, these ecumenical leaders and clergy, they are all about the rules that people need to follow when the churches reopen. I mean, keep your sermons short. Like, the sermons are not short enough. I mean, I don't know about you, but I, I, I think that most churches, their sermons range from 20 to 30 to 40 minutes long. And so here they are telling the churches and the pastors to keep their sermons short. I mean, people go to church to hopefully receive the word after a week of working hard to feed their families, after a week of getting these and the other temptations from the enemy, after a week of a myriad of distractions. They aren't supposed to come to church only to find a shortened sermon. And granted, if we are followers of Christ, we should be, you know, communing with God during the whole week. But then when it comes to this day of worship, be it Saturday, be it Sunday, I don't know which day of worship it is for you. But when it comes to this day, we come to fellowship with each other, we come to hear the word. And it's not supposed to be this cramped up, shortened version. So I found this to be so religious without spirit without any fire and guys many of today's clergy just like the pharisees of old are quite religious they have an appearance of being religious but there is no feeling really of the holy spirit there is no passion for the word there is no passion to see lives transformed. Really, there is no passion to see lives transformed. There is no passion to see this um, drug addict come to the Lord Jesus, to see this marriage that had been pushed to the wall by the devil just coming back together because of the power of the word. They don't have that passion. It's all religious. It's going through the emotions. It appears to be all an act. So the article continues, we recommend that worship leaders disinfect their hands in full sight of the congregation to help the congregation feel at ease about things the leaders will touch, reads the document. If it is done with clear intention and openly, but not awkwardly, the act will communicate to the congregation this matters. The guide notes, the risk of producing aerosols droplets of water suspended in air that can spread the coronavirus and thus recommends that preachers wear a face covering 
during sermons. It also says congregations should consider using standard gestures or American Sign Language to respond silently during liturgies. <coughs> so another thought came to mind when I was reading all this. If all these suggestions that they have for church leaders to reopen, if all these are not followed to a T, will the blame be on the churches if a second wave of CV hits worldwide? Will the churches be blamed? Will it be said we got a second serious wave of CV because the churches did not play their part, therefore we need to close the churches again, maybe this time for longer, until we get a vaccine or until we deal with this thing for good? Well, it is possible because the powers that be serve and worship the God of this world, Lucifer. That's according to Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. Read it, the God of this world with a small g. Participants in the guide's consultations included United Methodist Evangelical Lutheran Episcopal and Roman Catholic leaders as well as representatives from other traditions. I feel and you will probably agree with me that the Holy Spirit was not involved in this report. The Holy Spirit was nowhere when they were coming up with this report. It's a report that is more concerned with pleasing the system. The same system that has hyped this virus and filled the whole world with fear and anxiety as the beast system steps up its plans for a new world order. What is this ecumenism? What is this ecumenical movement? It is a world movement and they are and have slowly but surely been leading the world to the acceptance of their one world religion. And this is another version of the New World Order of the Occult. But the ordinary followers of this ecumenical movement have no idea of the movement's true aims and sinister connections because it is all dressed up in a facade of Christianity so as to deceive. You see these ecumenical leaders and you think, wow, this is so sweet that all these, you know, uh, traditional religions and denominations are just coming together in unity and love and faith you know it's a facade it's a facade it's it's a deception of hey let's all come together but it is not really the unity that the bible talks about it is a unity that is leading us to the one world religion the one world government that the antichrist will rule from the book, Be Wise as Serpents by Fritz Springer, you will come to the realization and discovery that a good number of pastors and preachers are actually Freemasons. And the Illuminati and the Freemason societies are behind the funding of several Bible stroke theological schools all over the world. This same Freemasonry is not so quietly preparing its members to accept and be part of the coming New World Order. And what makes Masonry so influential is the fact that so many of its millions of members occupy leadership positions around the world. They are everywhere. The Freemasons are everywhere. Then government they are in leading corporations, they are even in churches, friends. Because friends, we need to ask ourselves this question. Has the devil infiltrated the education system? Has he infiltrated the healthcare? Health care. So if he has infiltrated even the government, do we really think that he left out religion? Oh no, friends, oh no. He is too devilishly clever to do that. He has infiltrated churches 
like we have no idea. But the Lord is waking up his remnant and the Lord is getting out his remnant from many of these uh, dead religious churches. And he's bringing them together in home churches and he's teaching his remnant, some of them even in their homes. Because friends, we need to keep our spiritual antenna up. Because it is these same churches, these mega churches and these churches that are actually being headed by these Freemasons that will be coercing their members to take the mark of the beast when that time comes. So friends, we need to stay in the word and we need to stay in prayer. We cannot be casual about the things of God anymore. And we need to hold on to the Holy Spirit. Ask him to lead you every day. Because remember, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. I'll be interested to hear your views about this article. In the meantime, be blessed.